Yes? Okay. Well, good evening. Thank you all for joining us here in the sanctuary or virtually. I'm so very glad that you're here. So let's just go ahead and pray a little bit. So as we calmly and quietly let go of all our distractions, accomplishments, and didn't get done's of the day, just let them fade from your consciousness. And simply by taking gentle deep breaths, we let go of our imaginary separation from God and just really cozy up to the consciousness that is God, that is us, that is living and expressing in, through, and as us every moment, every second of the day with each and every wonderful breath, every thought, every action. And now let us just take the action of meditation and simply by using our breath, we go more deeply and just breathe in and breathe out. You may wish to repeat your favorite mantra, God is the love that I am. I am the love that God is. Or simply, I breathe in, I breathe out. And knowing our minds will stray or wander, when you become aware of it, with loving kindness, simply bring it back to your breath and continue to breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in and breathe out.
Welcome to those who have joined us during meditation, whether you've joined virtually or here in the sanctuary. I am, we are so very happy that you've joined us this, e sing this evening. I'll get the word out. Let's sing instead. Let's do God is in this place, led by Darius Locks. <laughs> Darius, and knowing that God is in this place, let's join together in prayer, knowing and feeling the divine presence of God that lives and thrives inside each and every person here. God is the divine love intelligence that rules the universe, that feeds us with knowledge and love and empowers us to be its own divine emissary. We are each of us chosen to be here on purpose and for purpose. And part of that purpose is to love, to love ourselves, to love one another, to love what we do, to bring joy, to divinely bring joy into this, this earth plane that we live on, to lift the consciousness of ourselves and that of others that are near and dear to us and those that are far away that we've never met. We have the power to lift the consciousness of the whole universe. Our prayers join together like a web of divinity that just lifts us up into a higher sense of being, a higher knowing of God, of that divine presence that is always with us, shining through us, through each and every. The tiniest act of kindness never goes unnoticed by God. It's never unappreciated. Whether you compliment somebody's shoes or how their hair looks, or you just simply let them pull in front of you when you're out driving. God is always there saying thank you. And these kindnesses just ricochet from one another and it spreads through the universe. And that's part of our job is to spread the love, the kindness, the doingness, the givingness of God, that awareness, that presence that is always with us that sometimes we forget. So through the loving act of kindness and understanding and non-judgment, we're able to just spread more of the goodness of life that it is here for each and every one of us to relish, to simply take it in, breathe it in, and allow it to circulate in, through, and present as us. And what a divine gift it is. And I am so very grateful to be here this evening, to be a part of a teaching that lets us know that this is true for us and each and every one of us. And I know that Reverend Sydney is just gonna elaborate on that with her talk this evening, that we will all be, um, divinely guided and uplifted through the message, through the songs, through our own company, through just being here and being present. And I say thank you, God, for this divine opportunity. And knowing it is true for me, it is true for each and every person here. And so it is. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give me this day my daily bread and forgive me my trespasses 
as I forgive those who trespass against me. And lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from error. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good evening, everybody. I hope you're well. Um, if you're into lofty aspirations, this is a song for you. This is an original song. It's called I Can Be Anything. Every day is a new day. Do I hit rewind or play? Future's blank and who's to say that it has to be this way? And if nothing's as it seems, how do I know what's real? Hear these voices in my head, but who is calling me? Should I turn around instead or follow my own lead? Do I dare myself to be? As big as I can dream I can be anything Whatever I believe I can reach out and touch the sky And when I spread my wings Whether I fall or fly Gonna kiss all my fears goodbye Know that I can be Anything. You were taught it can't be done, and everyone said so. And though you've had to walk alone, it's a road you've come to own. And if nothing's as it seems, jump in the mystery. That's interesting. We have a Zen, a Zen experience going on with the stand. That's the ghost, the ghost artist. Hi, I'm Reverend Sydney. I'm glad you're here. Um, Darius, you are just, you are, you just are, you just are. So welcome, and I want to welcome our, our live streamers too, because this place is such a wonderful place, and we come together so that in that realm of community, we can mm, support our own awakening, support other people's awakening, support 
this whole planet and knowing that we can be anything. And that actually, potentially within us, that divine potentiality, we already are that. We already are that. And we are worthy. And we are that divine. So it's interesting. I love, Jada, that you're wearing that shirt. It, it really touches me. Um, that how often do you hear yourself or someone else use as an excuse or a rationalization for something that perhaps didn't work out the way you wanted or you're trying to put something together and perhaps in advance of that, potentially because it might not work out, you say, well, I'm only human. I'm o they're only human. And it's interesting to me how we are so quick to undermine our own sacredness, how quick we are to sort of Give, us, give ourselves a back door, right? Give ourselves another exit. And we say, well, I'm just, hu I'm just human. I'm only human. Um, and we do it casually. You know, it's our daily conversation. And we don't even realize that we are basically dimming our own spiritual light. We're kind of, you know, we, we think the world is doing it, but we're actually just reaching out and we're, we're reaching for that rheostat and we're dimming the light. So the ways in which we speak to ourselves and describe ourselves have the capacity, I believe, and I've seen it and I've experienced, has the capacity to sabotage and at the very least mitigate the deep spiritual work that we do. Because we have this intention as we come together in a spiritual community or just on our own as we realize there's something that's calling us to, to be more, to reveal more that if we aren't being fully congruent with that desire, with that dream, which perhaps we have voiced as being my desire, my dream, that our language does not always support that. So I live, I, I work with a lot of people who really do truly desire to live from a higher plane of consciousness and to live in that realm of great possibility and joy. You know, we read in the Bible that we move from glory to glory, and we really want to do that. It doesn't say we move from mediocrity to meh to more mediocrity. We talk about moving from glory to glory, and it's, it's an, a, almost an incremental understanding because the more we experience a, a place of glory, a sense of it, we want more. We want to connect with more of that, and we want that for the people around us. We really do. So I know that we all want to be that person who is poised, peaceful, intentional, awake, who knows that you can do anything, who we can, I can do anything, I can be anything. And yet if our words are not lining up with those intentions, we can feel like we're driving with, you know, one foot on the gas and the other foot on the brakes. And, you know, we're making some progress, but man, it seems like it's taken a long time to get there, right? So, you know, when I was growing up, I don't know about you, I got some interesting mixed messages. My parents, thank God, would encourage me to, to be anything. You can be anything you want to be. And I remember, in fact, one time telling my mom, when I grow up, I want to be a nurse. And she said, well, you know, you could be a doctor. And I said, well, women, girls can't be doctors. She said, well, yeah, they can. They really can. Um, so they encouraged me to follow my dreams and to never settle. And yet there were some unspoken ideas which suggested that I should possibly do as they said and not necessarily as they had done. I could certainly sense and see where my mom had let fear or someone else's opinion of her or just an opinion of life keep her from fully living as we like to say out loud. And I could see how my father, who worked really hard and was truly one of the more brilliant men I've ever known, he was never really able to transcend the pains of abandonment which occurred when he was a little boy, when his mother left her marriage and her family to be with another man who happened to be the father of my dad's best friend. And he told me once that as a little boy, he couldn't understand why his best friend now had a mom and he didn't. And that's really struck it struck me with, wow, that woundedness, that's a wound that I don't know if it, how, how you heal that if you, don't, if you don't reach for tools, if you don't find yourself a, in, if you don't respond to that in a way that allows you to reveal a greater possibility and a greater knowing. So one of the things you're going to hear here, 
in this place quite often, I was about to say here, here, um, but you will hear it here, is that principle is not bound by precedent. Principle is not bound by precedent. And what that means is that no matter what has happened before, no matter what has gone on in our lives, or no matter what has gone on in the history of the world, any of that spirit is not limited that, by that, nor is it keeping track. So it's not as if it happened and now spirit is, is going to have to fall back and, and somehow start reaching up again. It doesn't work that way. And so since principle isn't, allow, uh, isn't limited by precedent, you know, what, is, what has come before, what has been set, what those limits are, it means that we are not bound by precedent. We are not bound by precedent. So no matter how low we think the bar is, we are not bound by that. There is no bar. There's no bar. So we begin this journey, you know, when we do this, of retraining our minds and our perceptions. The intention is that we want to know ourselves as infinite beings of God. And yet we already are that. So we, we begin the journey with the with the guidance from within that's going to lead us into an ever greater discovery, an ever greater expression and experience of being guided by that, of being informed by that, of oriented by that, that it becomes that spiritual true north that allows us to know ourselves as God knows us, as we like to say, as spirit knows us, as absolutely fully connected, fully expressive, fully worthy, and blessed, beloved. So, no matter what we have believed about how life is or how we are in the past, the only thing that has any power or any sway is the power of this moment right here and right now. All the power of the universe is present and available and active right here and right now. And that's what we teach, that we are living in this ever-present here and this eternal, never-ending, always, always, right here, now. That's what we live in and as. So we work to discipline our thinking to be congruent with God, to be congruent or in agreement and in alignment with the qualities of God. You know, we want to be in alignment and in expression. That was, we recognize these are the qualities of God, and if God is all there is, then that means that I am somehow in that circle of God being all there is because I don't live outside of that. So if I am immersed, saturated, flooded, filled, surrounded, and, and embodied in this, then what is true about God is true about me. So what we seek to do is to learn that and to unlearn anything that has told us differently. So we want to know that we are congruent with wisdom, with love, with harmony, with order, with wholeness, and to experience the wholeness that is God in every area of our lives, in ever-increasing amounts, because we increase our wisdom, we increase our availability. Does that make sense? Okay, good. So that being said, most of us probably grew into adulthood and all of the frustrations of adulting, wishing we had some sort of instruction manual, a how-to book, or at the very least, the answer key to all of life's seeming tests, right? We just wish we had those darn answers. Seriously, relationship tests, career tests, family tests. Don't you wish that we'd all at least had like a really good study guide? Something that would tell us, okay, prepare for this, prepare for that, prepare for this. Oh, and you're going to want to know that. So much of it happens in the moment as a discovery. And though we might have something that can give us some experience to glean from, we are ever discovering and trying, trying, trying to move into whatever experience we are having with the knowing of who we are. So it's not so much that we control our lives, control the circumstances, control the stuff that happens around us, because we can't. But what we can do is choose how we are going to be. So it's not the how we're going to make life work, how we're going to make God respond, how we're going to make this, how to, how to, how to. It's who. Who do we be? Who are we going to be? How are we going to be? What is our response? How are we going to know ourselves and show up in any moment, be it something that is life-affirming or not? Are we going to know ourselves in those 
non-affirming moments so that we can show up in the, in the, in the truth, the full truth of who we are. Um, the point is, for most of us, I think our default tendency is to back away from our radiance and to hide under that divine, to hide our divine light under a bushel of, well, I'm, I'm only human, I'm only human. And we usually say it kind of, well, I'm only human, and it's defensively, and it's self-judgment, it's all of that stuff, and it's usually in, in the middle of a, of a discussion with someone, perhaps a partner, not you, Charlie, of course not, no, no, this has never happened in my marriage where something has been misunderstood, and, and, and it's always me. The response will be, well, God, I'm only human. You know, what do you expect to be married to Wonder Woman? And you know, we, so we give ourselves an out to not access the divine, or actually, let's put it this way, to forget that we are divine. And it's not that this is performance-based living, because it's not that at all. It's expression-based living. But we give ourselves an out, an excuse to just, I think I'll forget I'm divine for a while, because I'm only human. You know, I'm just only human. But what if we chose to make yesterday or this afternoon the last time we ever say that phrase? What if we choose to do that? Or what if we chose to say right here and right now, this is the last time I'm ever going to say it. Let's say it together. I'm only human. Say it again. And if you're at home, say it like, like you mean it. I'm only human. Say it defensively. I'm only human and whining, right? Okay, you're done. You don't need to say that anymore. Because what if we chose instead to move into a personal paradigm of what my friend, author Linda Martella Witsit calls divine audacity. Divine audacity. Doesn't it just make you feel better to think about it? So she writes this in her book, which coincidentally, and it worked out really well, happens to be titled Divine Audacity. She says, it's fearless overcoming of the only human tendencies in order to do or say the right thing, to do that which unifies, harmonizes, strengthens, or uplifts. With divine audacity, you dare to be the light of the world. Oh, that feels so much better, right? I'm only divine light. I'll take that. So Jesus said, you are the light of the world. And it was an incredibly audacious thing to say. It was not received well. He didn't get a lot of agreement. But that is what he taught. As the teacher Jesus, that's what he taught. So these metaphors of light, those things which are related to God and humanity, are prevalent in scriptures of every religious tradition. You find them everywhere. And the teacher Jesus was astute about the science of light in inviting us to recognize that we have that same anointed, holy, Christedness because you know Christ meant anointed, it meant aware, conscious, awake. It was, that title was given to someone who was really, really seen to be very much in tune with their, with wisdom, let's say with wisdom, that they were awake, that they were teachers, that they were models for that, that they were truly spiritual leaders, spiritual beings who could stand forth and, and be that example of what God wanted, you know, and, and we, again, we move away from that God of personality into that God of presence, right? And so Jesus was saying that we are, we are the audacity of life itself, and we have the capacity to live as that light. We have that. We already have it. So light is visually perceived radiant energy. Can we all agree on that? Okay, light makes the invisible visible. Light makes the unformed formed. The hidden is revealed and the unknown is known. And these are the metaphors and the ideas that are consistent throughout wisdom teaching, throughout history, that light is used to represent not just light, but as wisdom, as love, as all that is revealed, that that, that which was hidden becomes known. That which was hidden is now no longer hidden. And our role is to no longer hide our light, to no longer hide that, to no longer argue for that limitation or mediocrity of, 
I'm only human, because I gotta tell you, we are spiritual humans. We are divine beings. We are spiritual beings living in a spiritual universe, which is governed by spiritual laws. Now we happen to be here on this human plane so that we can ever increase our knowing and our experience of love, of peace, of awareness, of harmony. That's what we're here to do not to suffer and struggle or to get so romanced and seduced by the, the attraction of struggle. And there's an attraction. It's a seduction that we have to struggle. That is not what we're here to do because that's not a quality of God. That is really not what God is. So just as Jesus' life as the Christ, the anointed one, displayed the visible evidence of invisible source and the visible evidence of invisible source, Jesus was trying to tell us that you and I are also anointed. We are transparencies for God. Let that light so shine. We are transparencies for God. So I was looking up the word audacity, and it means a disregard of restraints commonly imposed by convention or prudence. That's pretty darn cool, isn't it? You know, we are in this community, this teaching, we tend to be nonconformist. Thank God. It's wonderful. Um, and yet Jesus, who was a nonconformist, was, he, he suffered the punishment um, from the Romans, which was given for insurrection. You know, he was put on a cross. That's what they did for people who were guilty of insurrection. And I'm so happy to be an insurrectionist because I want us all to disturb the status quo. We need to disrupt it because that means we have awoken. We have, we have wakened to our, our light. We have, and we have disturbed and made other people uncomfortable. But mostly we make ourselves uncomfortable because now we are breaking through those habitual thoughts that might have been really comfortable or at least familiar, but not created a comfortable, loving life that we wanted. So some synonyms for audacity. Cheekiness, brashness, chutzpah, gall, nerve, crust, pertness, presumption, cheek, uh, sauce, saucy, sauciness, temerity. And then we have words that are related to it. We have assurance, cockiness, confidence, overconfidence. How is that possible? How is that possible? How can you be overconfident? if you are listening to the divine and you are shining your light. Um, let's see, insolence, rudeness, swagger, sass, swash. <laughs> um, these are all impotence. These are all these words that, that are associated to audacity. And it's very interesting, you know, because even though I said we could all use some good instruction man manuals to learn how to adult, right? There actually are some guidelines, and I found some guidance that suggests we already have all the resources we need. Because again, we are the visible evidence of an invisible source. We are that transparency for God. So Ernest Holmes wrote this, the desire you have to be something, to do something, is a mental echo in your mind of the spirit which already exists within you. It is an impact of your divine and spiritual self upon your mental or psychological self. It is the spirit in you seeking an avenue of expression through you. It is the real self, capital S, that you would like to be. The deep spiritual self, again, capital F, S, having all knowledge, having access to all power, being one with life. This is the self that can heal the sick and raise the dead. It is a transcendent, triumphant self. Amen, right? So um, Jacob Bohm, or Jakob Bohm, if you want to say it in my butchered Germanic, and I actually did study German for about 20 minutes, was a Lutheran mystic who was born in Germany in 1575. And just so you know, the pressure that was on him to not be audacious or bold or courageous or anointed led to him being persecuted and excommunicated. Yet there's a quote of his I found 
probably well over 20 years ago that has been part of my own mental lexicon for that long, and it's this. The gods I serve may not exist, but I will not leave the heights to search the abyss. The gods I see, the gods I serve may not exist, but I will not leave the heights to search the abyss. And there's another version, the gods I seek. So here's the thing. There's a lot of, there's a lot of energy in the world to bring us down from the heights into the abyss. And that's another one of those seductive things because it just seems like it would be so much easier to go along with it, to just be human. There's a lot of agreement there. There's a lot of power. There's a lot of magnetism. And yet, I will not leave the heights to search the abyss. I will not leave this place where I discover, where I reveal, where I seek to know more and to, and to align with and to, to be one and to celebrate that with, with God, with myself, with other people in order to make someone else comfortable, in order to just kind of live along with the status quo. Sorry to disrupt you there. Didn't mean to make you uncomfortable. I will not do that. And I hope that you won't either because the world needs us to disrupt and to wake up and to be, well, what's the phrase? That we are governed by our better angels, that we are led by inspiration and light, that we are transparencies for that, that we are transparencies for that. So in this book, Linda writes, being the light of the world is expressing our elevated, unified consciousness when we are in the world, moment by moment, choice by choice. So that means that being the light, when we choose and we say, yeah, I'm going to be the light, I'm the light of the world, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that, it means that we are claiming audaciously our divine our identity, our I am power. Now understand that this isn't personal power, right? I am power isn't personal power, it's spiritual power. It is the spiritual power. It is that source, that invisible source that empowers, that animates, that creates us. So just as God is not a personality, that infinite self, the I am, the divine identity is not my personality or your personality. It is that universal presence which surrounds and fills us. It is that which, as I say, divines us. It defines us and it divines us. It sources, guides, inspires, it sustains us, and it raises us up so that we, we transcend mere personality in order to live as God's audacity. We're here to be that, God's audacity. Because it, it's pretty audacious to think about life on the planet, right? And yet here we are, here we are, so what is to be your demonstration of audacity? How will you celebrate and live as divine audacity? You know, sometimes the most audacious thing, audacious thing I can do is to simply take time to meditate. There are those days, right? And then there are other days when the most audacious thing I'm capable of is not smacking someone who just clearly does not appreciate my divine audacity. Oh good, I'm not alone. <laughs> and sometimes the most audacious thing we can do is to forgive ourselves our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against, trespass against our divine audacity, right? You know, so here's, you know, I said finding a, a manual for this, and I see examples of this. I see models for this kind of audacity, this boldness, this, this loving courage. Keanu Reeves was abandoned by his father when he was three years old, and he grew up with three different stepfathers. He's dyslexic, and his dream of becoming a hockey player was shattered by a serious accident. His daughter died at birth, his wife died in a car accident, and his best friend, River Phoenix, died of an overdose. He lives in an ordinary apartment and likes wandering around town and is often seen riding the subway in New York City. When he was filming the movie The Lake House, he overheard the conversation of two costume assistants, one crying as he would lose his house if he did not pay $20,000 because he was in arrears on the debt. So Keanu Reeves deposited the necessary amount in, in that person's bank account because he could, because he could. 
In his career, he's donated large sums to hospitals, including 75 men. Well, that's, we all know that. And this isn't about the money that he's given. But listen to this. In 2010, on his birthday, he walked into a bakery and bought a brioche with a single candle, ate it in front of the bakery, and offered coffee to people who stopped to talk to him. Another time, some paparazzi found him walking one morning in the company of a homeless man in Los Angeles, listening to him and sharing his life for a few hours. So sometimes the ones most broken from the inside in this life are the ones most willing to help others. Keanu Reeves could choose to spend his time probably buying any, everything he wants, doing anything he wants, but instead he gets up every day and chooses that which cannot be bought. That is divine audacity. You and I are the light of the world, and boy, does this world need our light. The light which can never be dimmed is who and what we are. So call on that light, draw upon it, be that, be it with audacity and conviction, and by the way, with sass and sauciness. <laughs> if not now, then when? And if not you and I, then whom? I want to end with something written by Marianne Williamson. Our, one of our practitioners, Pat Wilson, just happened to send it to me this morning, not knowing that I was looking for a piece to sort of tie this together, and I found it to be so absolutely perfect. It describes how you and I really are the ones we've been waiting for. All right. I meet limited circumstances with unlimited thoughts. That's the affirmation. Our power lies in meeting limited circumstances with unlimited thoughts. It is not what happens to us, but what we choose to think about what happens to us that determines what will happen next. No matter what happened, we're at choice. We're at choice about who we choose to be in the space of what has occurred. I can have faith in the power of a problem or faith in the unlimited power of God to solve it. With every thought we think, we either summon or block a miracle. It's not our circumstances then, but rather our thoughts about our circumstances that determine our power to transform them. We choose in life whether to live in victimization or in victory. We can use our power against ourselves, or we can use our power to free ourselves. The point is that we always have the choice. And again, that affirmation is I meet limited circumstances with unlimited thoughts. And so it is. Let's pray. OK, so we realize that we are in this place of unlimited possibility, that we are sourced, that we are loved, that we are blessed by unlimited, unlimited presence and power and love and wisdom, that which we call God. And we recognize that it is the only power. Is it God and something else? It is God. It is God as all that there is. And that includes you. That includes me one with and one of and one as this one life. I now speak my word that we all recognize and that we all are now available in a greater way to being the divine audacity of God, to being the light, to saying, yes, I step forward, I step into that light which I am and I know that I shine that light. We release any thoughts of of stepping back from our own light. We know that those are not the thoughts of God. Those are the thoughts of the world. And we allow ourselves to shift our perceptions to know that there is one life, one power, one presence, and it is that which infuses us at every level. So we say yes to the wholeness that God is. And I know for each of us that God is now expressing in that activity of abundant life, of loving relationships, of peace, of willingness to simply be part of this wonderful dance of divine audacity. And I invite any, any tension which might, might be in your mind right now or concerns about loved ones or anything in the world, Bring it into the light. Bring it into your light. Hold it in your hand. Bring it to the light that is within your own being, knowing that as you remember your light, you do this for others as well. 
And in particular, we surround, oh, we surround Ukraine. We surround all beings with the knowing that they are light and that we see that light, we hold that light and we pronounce that light. And in that light, we pronounce peace. We declare peace. We declare peace. We declare holy, healing peace. We declare that God is the only activity present and it is greater than anything and everything else. We recognize that, we remember that, and we, we argue on the side of that whenever we find ourselves questioning. We remember that God is, in the beginning God, in the beginning God, in the beginning God, all God. All God, all the time, 24-7, 365, it's God and it's good. So I bless this church and I know that we are a blessing in the world. I know that this church is a blessing and I bless all churches, all ashrams, synagogues, mosques, cathedrals, all paths to God. Because I know that we celebrate that light and that unites us and we are absolutely united in that light for it is the truth of who and what we are. And I invite you to say with me right now, I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. Let's say it again. I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. And with a full, gracious heart, just so thankful, I release these words to spiritual law, to God's law, knowing it is so. And so it is. And together we say, amen. spirit from my life and my heart is open wide yes I'm only here for God no more struggle no more strife with my faith I see the light I am free in the spirit yes I'm only here for God I release and I let go let the spirit run my life and my heart is open wide yes i'm only here for god no more struggle no more strife with my faith i see the light i am free in the spirit yes i'm only here for god yes i'm only here for god Yes, I'm only here for God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so now is the time when we practice our grateful giving. And one of the things I want you to know is, in case you wondered, we do have an option of text to tithe. It's our wonderful way of allowing you right here in the sanctuary and come Sunday which is also a Duke Ellington song, by the way, for those of you keeping score in the home game, um, you will also have a QR code that you can scan. But you can text the word GIVE to 818-457-3419. It will be in your bulletin from now on, 818-457-3419. And this is where we just take this idea of our offering, our gifts, our tithes, and I invite you, if you have them in your hand or you have them in your heart, take that idea and hold it right here and say with me, won't you? From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. And so it is. Blessed always, blessed always for the arms of God surround us. Let our joy be so triumphant that we rest in God and say Amen. Blessed always, blessed always for the arms of God surround us. Let our joy be so triumphant that
can do that. Thank you so much, Darius. And talk about something audacious. What a Darius Lux that was born, you were born with audacity. I love that. So let me put my glasses on. Um, we've talked a little bit about ways of making donations. You can also go to the website for the church, which is nhcrs.org slash give. And you can shop on amazon.com, smile, and choose the church um, as uh, who the Amazon will give a small portion uh, to. So that's also very much appreciated. Prayer with the Practitioner will be available here in the sanctuary and also on Zoom immediately following service. Our Wednesday evening service with Reverend Sidney Steen. Uh, meditation at 6.15, service begins at 7 o'clock. However, now pay attention, there will be no Wednesday evening service April 13th. Reverend Sidney, you may join her on April 20th when her topic will be resurrected. Now what? The Easter message is one of transcendence and transformation. But once the party's over, then what? Rising up is an ongoing spiritual practice, and every day is an opportunity to live in a higher, from a higher place. And speaking of living from a higher place, I invite you to come on Sunday. That's this coming Sunday, April 10th? 10th, yeah. thank you. Okay. Um, and join us for the Circle of Healing. It will be held both here in the sanctuary and on Zoom as well. And I want to really rock this uh, healing circle this Sunday because I want us to join together and just really lift the consciousness, not only for the healing of ourselves and our loved ones, but for the healing of the planet because it is so needed now. And if you're not able to stay or come in uh, in person, please join us on Zoom. The um, information in the link is on uh, the church website, and I invite you to do that. It's going to be a, a profound service. I have no idea what I'm going to say, but come and find out. Okay. The grief support group will also be um, meeting with practitioner Carol Winnaker at one o'clock on Zoom. And here's another thing to pay attention if you're talking to somebody at home or here in the sanctuary. Um, the new time for the uh, Friday, Good Friday service is on April 15th and the service will begin at 6 p.m. followed by a fundraising dinner at 7 p.m. And um, it's entitled WWJE, What Would Jesus Eat? I have no idea, but I'm going to be here and I'll find out. I'll tell you about it afterwards. It's a delicious four-course meal that has an Eastern-ish, and I'm an ish kind of girl, so I'd love that. Um, tickets for the dinner are $35, and they're available on the website or on Sundays on the patio. And I'm bringing a friend, so please come and bring a friend as well. All kids, parents, and friends, watch out on Easter Sunday, April 17th. We will have our fabulous Easter egg hunt that lasts for probably four or five minutes, seconds, something like that, because those kids go like uh, locusts going around and stuff like that. And I love just watching them. I don't want to be, you don't want to be in their way, though. You get trampled. Um, it's immediately following the 9.45 a.m. service. All children are welcome. And uh, we invite you to bring your family and friends as well. And something else, if you would like to donate uh, plastic-filled eggs, we'd appreciate that. Just simply drop them by at the office. And thank you very much. If you made a Journey of the Heart pledge this year and have not picked up your special gift yet, please see or contact Doreen in the office. Zoom virtual patio before and after Sunday and Wednesday services. And there's also Zoom meditation every morning, Monday through Saturday from 7.55 a.m. to 8.15 a.m. And I'll be there tomorrow morning. 
so please join us. And you may visit our website at nhcrs.org to obtain Zoom links and other information about all the wonderful events and sign up for our weekly, oh, weekly, I, uh, I must need polygrip or something here. I don't know. Our weekly e-blast and monthly newsletter. Thank you very much. Now Reverend Sidney is going to pray us out. So wait a minute. Plastic filled eggs or plastic eggs that are filled? Don't fill your eggs with plastic. It's not a good thing, and our kids will not appreciate it. But if you have plastic eggs that you would fill with candy, yeah, now that works, but don't put plastic in there. There's enough plastic on the planet. Um, by the way, I want to tell you, we are, as of tonight, having coffee and tea and refreshments after this service, yay, in the patio. So please join us if you want to socialize for a bit. You know, we have not done that in over two years for this service. So just come and, and enjoy, and you know, when it's time to go, you'll hear me going, last call, and then you'll just head out, and it'll be all fine. I want to thank um, our practitioner who held vigil tonight at home, Lynn Romanowski. Our Facebook Live support is Dean Regan, and we had Zoom support from Diane Satterley, Mark Kroll, and Ray Regan. Lights and sound, Adam Cation, who, by the way, you know, you wouldn't know that one of our screens is broken because we live by the creed, if you can't hide it, you paint it red. And so look what we have, this beautiful, I mean, isn't that wonderful? That was Adam, he put that up there until we get the screens fixed. And so it's just so beautiful. Thank you, Adam. There we go. And Luana Schertzberg was, Skirtsberg, Skirtsberg. I knew, I should, I've never asked you. Jasper, okay, was our greeter and usher. Sanctuary media, media team, Doreen Remo, Brenda Jordan, and Nikki Zavara. Darius Lux, iTunes, right, free music? Excellent. Thank you so much. Your voice just resonates so powerfully. Sam, you are a, a rock star, man. Sam Krieger. Mary Catherine O'Hart, I am Reverend Sydney. By the way, because of Good Friday, that's why we're not having a Wednesday service next week. So do come to our Good Friday service at 6 o'clock. It will be a service that is um, anchored in the intention of understanding our own crucifixions and rising from them, that resurrection that happens. How do we create life in the midst of that? How do we allow ourselves to be that life in the midst of it? Okay, we're going to pray and get the heck out of here. Um, okay. With a sense of gratitude, completion, and knowing, we love that we are able to invoke a deep sense of peace, that peace that comes from mm, inviting come Sunday for peace, come Wednesday for knowing celebration, come Saturday for Sabbath, come that day, all of them being days of spirit, and how wonderful that we cultivate that consciousness and we get to live in that. And in gratitude, we move out into the world in peace, audacity, and wonderful, loving knowing. So I am grateful for all of it. And I just simply say, and so it is, amen. Thank you. We rest in God.